What's good, everybody? In this video, we're talking about word problems and slope and how to properly set the equation up and solve. Hopefully, you guys like this video. If you do, smash the like button for us. So in our first problem, after we read it, we have to write down some important information. So we know that we spend 15 cents per picture, right? But we don't know the amount of pictures that we're going to buy. That's, that's what the problem's asking us. So our variable x is going to be the number of pictures. Now, there's two other pieces of information. We have a, a, a flat, flat fee shipping rate, I'm sorry, of $3. All right, so this is our flat fee. Let's just put flat fee. And then we know that we only have $35 to spend. That looks so ugly. So now that we have all the important information, how do we solve this problem? Well, for one, we're using the formula y is equal to mx plus b. And what we're trying to solve for is x, the number of pictures. And remember that y is a dependent variable. So based on a certain number of pictures, we're going to have to spend a certain amount of money. The amount of money we have, they told us, is a $35 budget. So I know 35 is equal to the cost per picture times the amount of pictures. And then once we make an order, we always have to pay that flat fee of $3. So now that we set the equation up, we can solve for X, like a regular equation. So I subtract three from both sides. And what I have is going to be 32 is equal to 0.15X. And once I divide by 0.15, we are going to get, let's get grab the calculator. We're going to get 213.333 is going to be a repeating decimal. But just remember, it's asking us for how many prints she can order. So we can't order 0.33 prints. We have to round to the nearest or the closest whole number which would be rounding down because we don't have enough money for 214. So in this problem, X would be equal to 213 prints for Mary Ann. In problem number two now, guys, they're giving us a lot of information for this international call. So number one, we know that when we have a 10-minute call to France, it's going to cost us $3.19. And then if we have a 15 minute call, it's going to cost us $4.29. So the first thing we need to do is to take these two ordered pairs and try to figure out what exactly is the rate of change, AKA slope. So once we set this formula up, we're gonna have 4.29 minus 3.19, all divided by 15 minus 10. And once we start simplifying, we're going to get 1.10 divided by 5. And if I'm not mistaken, that's going to give us a rate of change of 0.22. So the reason we had to do that, guys, is because if we divided the dollar amount by the minutes, we got two different answers, right? So we had to find out what exactly is the rate of change. Now, in the second part of this problem, we're going to use the point slope formula, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is going to help us to create an equation so that we could solve this problem. So once we set this up now, let's see, we're going to have y is equal to, ooh, not y is equal to, I'm sorry, guys, y minus 4.29 is equal to our slope, 0 0.22 times x minus, and what is our x again? 15. All right, just wanted to make sure. So now that we set this up, understand we could have used the other ordered pair, 10, 13. We would get the same answer. So once I simplify this now, I'm going to have y is equal to, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying y is equal to, y minus 4.29 
is equal to 0.22x minus, and let's grab our calculator just to make sure we get the right answer. All right, minus 3.3. Now this turns into a regular equation, guys, and we're just trying to get to that final format of y is equal to mx plus b. So when I add 4.29 on both sides, the final equation is going to be y is equal to 0.22x, let's see, plus 0.99. So this is the equation we're now going to use to determine the cost of a 12-minute call to France. All right, so let's do some erasing. So when we go back to the top, I'm going to switch back to black now. We're going to use this equation, and we're going to plug in 12 for x. All right? So once we go back, we're going to have y is equal to 0 0.22 times 12 plus 0.99. And once we do this, we're going to get y is equal to, let's grab the calculator one more time. Let's see, 0.22 multiplied by 12, 2.64 plus that 99 cents. So our final answer is going to be y is equal to $3.60. So this is how we would solve an international call like this. Tell us if you have any questions on this problem. I know it could be tricky. It's so much to say and explain in this one problem, but we're going to go ahead and go to the next problem on slope. Problem number three, we're dealing with airplanes and how long will it take the airplane to reach the ground? So number one, we know the airplane is 30,000 feet, 30,100 feet above ground. And it's telling us that the plane is descending and it's going down at a rate of 2,150 feet per minute. So what I'm going to do is put a negative sign out in front because we have to understand that when we say descending, that means we're going down. That's like a negative slope. All right. And that's important because we're using the slope intercept for formula, which is y is equal to mx plus b. So when we look at this right now, guys, we know we know what our slope is, but we don't know the amount of minutes. How long is the plane in the air? That's what they're asking us for. That's the unknown. So x is equal to number of minutes. OK, so the problem asks us to write and solve an equation of how long it will take the plane to reach the ground. So when we set this equation up, we would have y is equal to negative 2,150x plus 30,100. And the reason why this is our B, guys, is because we're already in the air and we want to know, hey, to reach the ground, Y, which is really zero, how long would it take? We're solving for X. So for us to solve this, we're going to isolate our variable. So I'm going to subtract the 30,000. 100 and my new equation will be negative 30,100 is equal to negative 2,150x. Now when we see these two negatives, we know that once we divide our x is going to be positive because why? Time cannot be negative. That's a trick they're always going to try to throw in on you guys. So what I'm going to do now is divide by negative 2,150 and let's see, what are we going to get for x? So once we divide this in our calculator, we're going to get 14 is equal to x. And just remember that 14 represents the amount of time in minutes. So it's going to take us 14 minutes for that plane to ascend down from 30,000 feet and get to the ground. Moving on to the last problem of the day, guys. We hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you have, smash the like button for us. Comment down below if you have any questions. It asks us which line is parallel to 5x minus 2y is equal to 18. So parallel lines basically run next to each other and never intersect. So that means they're going to have the same exact slope. So once we put this in slope-intercept form, meaning we get it, we get y by itself, 
we're going to have negative 2y is equal to negative 5x plus 18. We're going to divide by negative 2. And then our final answer would be y is equal to positive 5 over 2x minus 9. So now we're going to look at the answer choices that has the same slope. And we notice that only C has a five, positive 5 over 2 slope. So this would be our correct answer. But before we go, let's say it asked us for which line is perpendicular. So perpendicular lines is going to have a negative reciprocal. So after we take the reciprocal, meaning we bring the top to the bottom, bottom to top, our slope would be 2 over 5, and then we would have to make it negative. So if they ask for a perpendicular line, we would look at B as our answer choice because that's the negative reciprocal of 5 over 2x. Hope this video was helpful for you guys. Subscribe to the channel. And thank you guys so much again for watching Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.